Are you getting too much hyperbaric oxygen? Are you not getting enough hyperbaric oxygen? How would you even know how much hyperbaric oxygen therapy you should be doing? In this video, we're gonna talk about the continuum of hyperbaric exposures and how to start building programs and protocols that will match your needs and your goals. Let's just start with some basics. There is no one size fits all protocol, and that's true of both pressure, percentage of oxygen, and frequency and duration. Even if 10 different people had similar goals in mind, they're all gonna respond to the therapy differently. And there's even individual variation once we know what the goals are. The patient or this person's goals really need to be well understood. And then we need to learn how to match the right pressure, percentage of oxygen, and frequency and duration of therapy to the goals in mind. More severe illness and more robust goals would require more intense protocols. Less severe illnesses and less robust goals should certainly require less robust programs. That should make perfect sense. So let's first discuss the too much or not enough. In your mind, I want you to picture a continuum. On one end of that continuum is the most mild form of hyperbaric. Let's just call it 1.3 atmospheres on air, 21% oxygen. And let's just say human tolerance should never be exceeded, would be three atmospheres of pressure on 100% oxygen. That would essentially and definitively cause oxygen toxicity, which by the way, is an entirely different conversation that we've made a few videos on. So if you're interested, we will put links about oxygen toxicity in the description below. So if we were concerned with the physical dosage of oxygen on any given session, we could use this pressure range to better understand the intensity of the therapy. But hyperbaric is not about a single session at a single pressure. It's also about duration. How frequent am I being exposed over what period of time? The lowest frequency of exposure that I've really ever talked about or heard anyone talking about would be maybe one session a month. A very aggressive frequency, maybe one of the most aggressive frequencies that we would ever use might be 90 minutes twice a day, seven days a week. So that's three hours a day, 21 hours a week, 84 hours a month versus one hour a month. So you could see there's a huge range here. What about duration? Am I gonna do this for a week? Am I gonna do this for two months? Am I gonna make this part of my overall wellness and longevity strategy where it's in and out of my life over years on end? Again, there's no right or wrong to any of the things I've said so far other than doing our best to match the pressure intensity, the frequency intensity, and the duration intensity with the goals in mind. Is it possible to do too much hyperbaric? Absolutely. You could go to higher pressures than what your body is really willing or wanting to accept at any given time. You could also be doing 90 minutes twice a day when all you really needed was three hours a week. You could be doing five to seven days a week for months and years without ever taking breaks or understanding what some of those long-term consequences could be. So as powerful and, and important as oxygen actually is, too much of a good thing could still have consequences. Your body still needs to accept the therapy that you're giving and then create an appropriate response to the therapy that was given. So it would be impossible for me to, in this video, give you an example of a protocol for every possible goal or health issue that somebody might be having, but some general guidelines. When somebody's really sick, they may not tolerate it well. Therefore, we always start slow and low and build their tolerance, not only so that we're not pushing them too hard, but so that we're helping them become more resilient and more adaptable, which over time is gonna help them overcome whatever issue they're dealing with, but also be more adaptable to other environmental stressors that we all encounter throughout our life. As they can tolerate more, we're likely to do more. And somebody that's really ill, but tolerating the hyperbaric exposures well, or at least better over time, those are people that eventually will often see a 90 minutes twice a day for five days a week for two months, as an example. But I certainly don't take someone who's really ill and put them there. I help them work up to that. And I think that that's a really important concept to understand if you're building a protocol for yourself or you're helping to design protocols for other people. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work? Why does it work? Why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps? And how do we use it appropriately and use it safely? And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. If you're relatively well and you're just looking for health optimization, quite honestly, in most cases, 90 minutes twice a day, five days a week for two months is excessive. And in my opinion, I'm never looking for the highest amount that somebody can tolerate as much as I'm always looking for the minimum effective dose. 
What's the minimum amount of this ingredient that you require to get the maximum benefit without exceeding that amount? I think that's important not only in hyperbaric, but everything that we do. I would also say if you've never done hyperbaric before, going immediately into a once a month program is essentially useless. There are short-term and long-term benefits of hyperbaric, most likely, especially from a wellness and longevity standpoint, you're looking for the long-term. Angiogenesis, new blood vessel growth, stem cell mobilization, growth factor release for repair and regeneration of cells and tissues. And once a month, even if you did that your entire life, is probably never gonna allow you to access those long-term benefits. So anybody going into hyperbaric for the first time should do some moderate intensity program, at least for their first protocol. What does that look like? To me, likely somewhere between four to six hours a week for about eight to 10 weeks. Accumulating somewhere between 30 and 40 hours in three months or less, and quite honestly, a shorter period of time is likely better, will activate most of the long-term benefits that people are looking for with regard to hyperbaric. But once you've created that momentum, your need to stay at that intensity is unnecessary. Just like going to the gym, by doing a certain intensity of exercise, reaching a certain fitness level, once you're at that fitness level, if you stop exercising, you should expect that those changes and benefits start to go back to baseline. But if once you reach that level of fitness and you want to maintain that level of fitness, you could reduce your level of intensity but still be able to maintain the benefits you achieved. Hyperbaric would be very similar. Once you've done that 30 to 40 hour program over the course of roughly three months or less, you can certainly expect to reduce your frequency and duration and be able to keep a lot, if not all of the changes that you got in that first program. And only maybe in some of those cases could once a month, but that still actually might be pushing the just, I'm not getting enough. But only if you did that front loading and had that momentum, could you really get down to a much lower frequency for maintenance purposes. So when I have somebody come to me for wellness, and they say, listen, I want to come once a month. I'm pretty well. I just, I heard a lot of good things about hyperbaric and I'd love to have access to these benefits. It is kind of expensive and it is time consuming. So I only want to do once a month. We really don't have people do that in our office. I don't want to waste anybody's time and I don't want to waste anybody's money. I try to explain that we need that front loading experience to create that momentum. And then most certainly after we can reduce the frequency and duration. But to go into something as powerful as hyperbaric is at a frequency that is never going to achieve the goal is really not a good use of resources. And that would be somebody that's now in my community saying, I tried hyperbaric. It was interesting. It was cool. Didn't really notice much. Didn't feel much. And honestly, I think that concept is something that is hurting the hyperbaric industry as we speak. If somebody came to me and said, listen, I'm going to do 12 sessions in my entire life. Could I come once a month or should I come every day? for 12 days in a row, 100% of the time, it would be every day for 12 days in a row, even though that's probably also not enough, at least there's some chance that we created some cumulative impact and started some cellular changes and momentum in a healing and regenerative capacity versus the once a month, which like I said, is just never gonna create that momentum. So again, unfortunately, there's a lot more detail here than I can go into in a single video. However, I'm hoping that this was helpful in regards to a thought process for understanding the continuum of sort of the minimum dose that may be effective for a given reason, the maximum dose, and in terms of pressure, frequency, and duration. So if you found this video helpful or you know somebody that might have a similar question to you, please feel free to share this content. Sharing this information is literally the reason I put these videos out. Thanks again for your attention and I'll see you on the next one. Maybe you just bought your first chamber or you're thinking about buying your first chamber. Maybe that's a home use chamber or perhaps you're considering offering hyperbaric inside your clinic. And if you're anything like me when I first started, you're realizing how much information there is out there and you're concerned, are you doing this the right way? Are you being safe? How am I gonna utilize this hyperbaric chamber in the most effective way possible? If you're just getting involved in hyperbarics and you're looking for an introductory training program, the basic hyperbaric technician program is exactly what you need. In this course, we're gonna cover how does hyperbaric work? Why does hyperbaric work? What makes hyperbaric oxygen such a unique therapy? What mechanisms of action are taking place? What are the benefits of hyperbaric, both short and long-term? And what types of indications are appropriate to utilize hyperbaric for? We will also help build your confidence, not only in how to utilize the therapy, but how to talk about this therapy with patients or with other healthcare providers that may not understand hyperbarics the way you will once you finish this course. So if you're ready to dive in, click the link below this video and let's get started.